Okay, so we're now recording. So hello everyone. Welcome to the UNCG Libraries webinar series on online learning and innovation. My name is Sam Harlow. I'm the online learning librarian. Um, we came up with this series of webinars years ago um, to just talk about things to do with really instructional technology and online learning at UNCG. It's available for anyone who teaches at UNCG as well as staff and uh, graduate students, especially if they um, TA or are interested in these kind of uh, online learning technology tools. So um, just a couple of logistical things before we got started. We are in Zoom meeting and it is set to be mute upon entry and um, we appreciate it. If you stay muted throughout the actual presentation part, this is only about 30 minutes long. You can put your um, questions in the chat. If you're in full screen mode, you can push escape and then um, it will, you know, kind of make it go smaller and then you could have it the chat up on the right of your screen as well if that's what you prefer. But the chat icon is at the bottom of your screen and it is a chat icon. Um, so I'm going to put the link to the other webinar series and we will talk about that at the end. Um, we also have a webinar series on research and application. Um, if you have any technical issues while we're getting going, you're welcome to email me, but also remember that this is being recorded. Um, so worst case scenario, we send you the all, we send everyone who signed up for this, the recording, and it also lives on that link that I dropped in the chat as well. So does anyone have any questions before I introduce our um, hosts of today? Okay. So I'm going to take that silence as, as uh, everyone's good. So today we are talking about digital storytelling tools with, at Night Lab with Northwestern uh, with the UNCG University Archivist, Aaron Lorimore. So Aaron, I'm going to mute yourself, mute, mute yourself, mute, mute myself, and then uh, I'll be here helping with chat in the background. Thank you, Sam. And I'll unmute me. So hopefully everyone can see me or hear me and see the screen. Um, as Sam said, I'm going to be talking about the Night Lab suite of um, digital storytelling tools. And these are tools that we use in university archives um, for our own digital storytelling purposes, but also I use it in both an undergraduate and a graduate class that I teach. And um, I've gotten really good feedback from students. I, one of the tools, I'll, I'll, and I'll talk about it more when I get to it, is the one that I specifically use every semester in, in a classroom setting. But I guess to start with, I want to talk a little bit about NightLab and what their purpose is and the suite of tools that they have. So NightLab is actually a, um, a research lab at Northwestern University outside of Chicago. And it's actually um, part of the School of Journalism there. So this is not um, a tool that's specifically built for, I guess, any kind of specific classroom discipline. Um, it's not specifically for telling historical stories or um, anything else like that. So I happen to be the university archivist. So most of my stories that I tell using these tools do uh, rely on uh, archives and other historical evidence and do kind of have that very um, time-based storytelling driving behind it. But as, as we'll, we'll see, there are a number of other things that you can use these tools for. So when you go to the uh, Night Lab website, which we'll actually share in a second, I just realized I did not actually put it on this slide. Um, you can also honestly Google Night Lab and that's, this is going to be your first thing that pops up. You can see they have six tools that, um, that they offer in full, uh, with full support. Right now, they also have two other things that are in development, but um, I'm going to talk specifically in a little bit more detail about three of these tools. And these are the three tools that I specifically have used, but um, know that there are six that, that exist. And we'll kind of go over what the other three do in brief detail. But I want to start by talking about a tool called Juxtapose JS. And you'll see that most of the tools from Timeline uh, or from Night Lab end with JS. That stands for JavaScript. That just tells you 
what kind of programming is driving these tools. Honestly, you don't need to know anything about JavaScript or even what JavaScript means in order to use these tools. But juxtapose, and I did manage to put juxtapose, uh, the, the web address for that on, on this slide. So what juxtapose is it actually allow, allows you to do side-by-side -side comparisons of two different images. And I will say, I purposely have um, done this presentation using screenshots and not live demos because today, um, Night Lab is actually updating their suite of tools and I didn't know if they would still be updating it when I presented. So I apologize for these not li being live demos, but hopefully the images will give you enough of a sense of, of what they do and again how we use them in um, either my classroom setting or in university archives. So what you see there is a picture of College Avenue. It's a picture honestly that uh, one of our former student workers just took with her cell phone and with juxtapose you see the little slider bar and we've lined it up with a photo, a historic photo of campus. Um, this is a photo that's from our university archives from 1922 and um, you can see that it gives you that sense, that, that then and now sense. So you can kind of go back and forth between the two using the slider bar. This is something, honestly, that um, the tool itself is easy to use. The hardest part of this is actually just taking a modern photograph that lines up with the historic photograph. Um, I've also had students use this to demonstrate um, for instance, I had a student last semester who used this in a tool where she was showing how many chapters of a specific organization existed in North Carolina counties in one year versus how many chapters existed 15 years later. And so she just had a map of North Carolina. She colored in the counties that existed the first year. She created with the same map the same counties that existed 15 years later, and she used the slider bar to demonstrate the differences. When you go to the Juxtapose website to do this, it's super easy. This is basically what you see on the screen, the entirety of what you have to do as the user to make this work. You put in a URL for the left image, and you can actually have that um, image as long as it's publicly available, it could be in um, Dropbox or it could be on a website somewhere, your own website somewhere, as long as it's publicly available for the most part um, and not hidden on social media. That's one of the tricks is that Night Juxtapose won't pull an image from Facebook. So a URL basically that ends in JPEG, a left image, a right image, you can create labels and captions. So what you saw in those previous images in the upper left corner, um, the date, that is the, um, the label function. And again, you can give credit to the image as well. You do that, you basically press create and it brings you, it gives you this tool that is an easy slider to show then and now functionality. So again, very, 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 very simple to use. Slightly more complicated, but still pretty easy to use is story map. JS. So story map is a tool that specifically is going to, um, it's going to allow you to tell a story that is both linear, so based on, you know, movement through time, but also um, place-based. So kind of like a travel story. That's kind of the ideal purpose of story map is a travel, traveling through place, space and time, like your Doctor Who. Um, an example from the timeline, from the Night Labs website is a, a map of mapping manifest destiny across the United States, how population centers grew and moved west, westward over time. You can see with each, oh, you can see with each spot on the map, you can create, you can have an image that illustrates the space or illustrates whatever you want to illustrate when it comes to that data point. You can have a date, you can have a place, you can have text, you can kind of create whatever you want that pops up when you hit that space. And over time, this is what you're going to, how you're going to input it. Again, it's not rocket science by any stretch of the imagination. It ties in essentially, if you can use Google Maps to 
locate something on the map and you have your, again, your URL for your photograph, your caption, your text, you input that. So you're specifically choosing a place on the map above. You can, of course, zoom in much tighter than, you know, all of Europe, but um, you zoom in as close as you want to a specific, you know, point, a specific GPS coordinate. Um, add your media, add your headline, and then that's your marker. And that creates that marker on the map. And you do that for each one of your, your markers as you go along. Hey, Erin, um, I'm going to catch you because you're still on this page. But someone just asked, does it need to be a photograph? Can it be a video, a URL to YouTube, for instance? Yes. So actually, the one that I have pulled up now if you actually look really closely at the dots on the map on the left, the grayed out dots, you can actually kind of see the range of things you can have. Um, if you know how to translate, you know, corporate emblems that way. So you could have a tweet, you could have a Vimeo uh, video, WordPress blog post. Um, you can link out to just about anything um, from these individual points. Um, Again, it's it's a media that you're uploading and it does one of the things I actually like that it does is what you can see in that gray box right now that says no media selected is it previews it for you when you're inputting your URL. So you don't have to go all the way through everything in order to have it magically tell you, sorry, you screwed up 30 steps ago. Um, if If the media link that you've provided, for instance, isn't publicly available, it's going to tell you when you put in the URL, which at least for me, uh, makes me very, very happy. And you can also, if you see with the headline, you can, um, it has some basic functionality where you can add links out to other things, um, you know, bold and italics and things like that. So even within the text of the headline itself, um, you can add links, for instance, like for more information, if you have a blog post that provides, you know, 10,000 words on a specific topic, you can link out to that from these individual posts and people can navigate that way. Actually, before I skip over to Timeline JS, one other thing that I want to mention that um, Story Map will allow you to do, and I will say this saying, I've been told it does this and I've not used it for this function. I've only used it for the mapping over space and time function. But I've been told that it also can be used if you have, for instance, some sort of composite photograph, you can change the map in the background to instead be a photograph as your background. Um, again, I have not used that, but one of the demos that I've seen that does that takes, um, basically takes her Hieronymus Bosch painting and walks you through all the horrible things that are awesome that are in the painting and basically does a movement through space but using a painting as, as the background. Um, again, I haven't used that, but it could be an interesting thing to play around with, particularly if you have like a photograph of you know, for my purposes, I think of we have a photograph of our very first UNCG faculty, the first faculty in the in 1890s. And, you know, we could use that to kind of map around and talk about each of them individually. The tool, though, that I want to that I'm probably going to talk the most about just because it's the one I have the most experience using is Timeline JS. This is the one specifically that I mentioned at the beginning that I use for both my undergraduate class and for a graduate class. Um, over the course of that time, I've had very good feedback from students in both classes about um, the tool being easy to use and um, the tool um, producing something that looks much, uh, much fancier than the actual amount of work that you put into it. Um, it's a good tool for building something on a, on a portfolio site. And again, we use it extensively also in university archives. But basically, it's a tool that creates an easy to use functional timeline. Um, it, you can, again, 
have photographs, as long as the photographs published somewhere on the web, you can have text, you can link out to other resources. All of this you see at the top is just what I think of as one specific data point on a timeline. But what I think is really cool that um, Timeline JS does without you having to do anything as the person creating the timeline is it creates a scrollable timeline across the bottom of the page. So you can actually have each of these, you can scroll along the entire timeline, click, and you, you can either choose to go chronologically through the timeline or to click on those um, individual data points that show up in the scrollable timeline below. You also can basically take your, your data points and have it so again, you scroll through chronologically, but in the scrollable piece at the bottom, you can, um, you can kind of chunk things out into different timelines. So I could have a timeline here of men presidents at UNCG or women chancellors of UNCG and have that show as two different options for scrolling through at the bottom. Um, someone asked, do students submit a URL in Canvas for this? Yes. Um, so one thing, when you, when you create all of these tools in um, Timeline.js, StoryMap, uh, Juxtapose, any of these tools, it actually will give you both a URL and um, an iframe, some iframe text that you could post into a website. So if you are working with students who are who do have their own websites and are a little bit more tech savvy, you could actually have this built into a larger web page. But um, for, for most functions, a simple URL um, that's produced through Timeline.js or Juxtapose or StoryMap is what I have students turn in. I will say that um, the embedding code that comes from Timeline.js does not always work well with um, some WordPress themes. So if you are thinking of having students embed their timeline into a larger project or a larger website, um, there may be some, some tricks that you have to um, do in order to make this appear properly. For my classes, um, I actually just have the students send me the URL that's produced directly through um, through the timeline or the J, uh, story map website. So again, you can see at the bottom how things look when you are scrolling through. Uh, we again, this is a, a map uh, timeline of presidents and chancellors at UNCG for the first 50 years of the university. We had pretty long standing. Uh, Ch chancellors and presidents. And then once we got to the 50s, they kind of clumped together and came and went much more frequently. And so you can see what it looks like when you start having data points that are a little bit closer together. The one trick that I will say with Timeline.js is um, if you do have a, a timeline that you're creating where there's, for instance, one data point and then in like the 1920s and then lots of data points that are clustered together in the 1960s and then one data point in 2005, for instance. Maybe it's someone's life, most of their works that you're talking about are in one very short time period, but you also have birth and death on the timeline. It can make the timeline, the scrollable piece at the bottom, look a little wonky because it does spread out over the entirety of the time period. And so, um, you know, that's just a, a piece to kind of keep in mind is that you can, uh, you can come up with a scrollable timeline at the bottom that looks a little cluttered depending on the story that you're telling. So what is a Google Sheet? When you go to the Timeline JS website, it actually provides you with a direct link to download this Google Sheet directly to your Google Drive. And, um, it has the example information that you see in front of you, but you basically just fill out this Google Sheet. Um, you know, input all of your data points, the date, as specific as you want to get. It could just be the year, it could be the year in the month, the year in the day, all the way down to absolute minute. But um, you have this in your Google Drive and you publish it to the web. Again, the steps for how to do this are pretty clearly spelled out on the Timeline.js website. Um, 
and you just paste the URL for your Google Sheet onto the Timeline.js website, press the button to publish, and you have a URL for your magical timeline. Um, so Aaron, do you see? Um, yeah, I see Terry's question. Um, can you export the entire timeline or must you use the Night Lab site to store and distribute your timeline? So you cannot export the timeline as a thing of its in itself because all of the the honestly the database that that reads the data in the sp spreadsheet you've created lives on their website it's a web-based tool um, and so you do keep control of your spreadsheet of course so your google sheet is still on your account and it's your tool to use but you do have to send it basically to night labs and night labs again has to give you that iframe or the url um, so it's it's not something that you independently could um could have Just same with story map yeah so you're always for all of these tools because of the way that they're built you're going to be i mean in the same way that to be perfectly honest if you have a video on youtube you can embed it in your website but you're still having to rely on youtube for the functionality of making that display properly um it's the same it's the same concept does that answer everybody's question hope, hope so so i mentioned at the very beginning that there are a handful of other tools night lab tools that obviously i don't have time to get into right now um sound site is one that does inline audio so if you have a page of text for instance and it has a quote from someone and you actually have audio recording of that person saying that quote and you want someone to be able to click those words and hear the person say the words that's what sound site does um, again really a cool tool if you're a journalist especially but that's what that's what it does so scene vr is the same but for augmented reality stories storyline tells stories behind data points on a data graph so it's kind of like story map but for for data instead um terry asks if we're relying on night labs to keep supporting this product indefinitely or are we potentially going to lose our projects if they shut it down i would argue that that's the same case that we're in with wordpress being used to drive the university's website and youtube being used to host video and things like that um so yes but um you know you, you're still going to have the data itself the google sheet is yours all the data is yours you're hosting the data they just are providing the functionality that that comes through but yeah um to be honest i think you'd be very hard pressed in today's technological world to do much of anything on the web without some reliance on someone else supporting a product somewhere uh good or bad <laughs> so um Again, that's a quick run through uh, Night Lab tools they offer, how they can be used both for, uh, I guess, personal research purposes, but also for classroom instructions. There's a link to the Night Lab website on the final slide, so I did remember to put it there, as well as my email address, um, as well as my Corgi. But um, if anyone has any other questions i'm happy to answer them now i'm also of course happy to answer those questions via uh, email later as you kind of start digging in or if you have questions and want specific links to examples of how we have used these resources i'm happy to to provide those if you shoot me an email and ask great so this is sam um, y'all are welcome to unmute yourself or put questions in the chat um, Sorry, my daughter just started lunch. But um, one of the questions I kind of have is, um, or not have, but maybe Erin, you could talk about is that this is an open source program, right? Which means you don't have to worry about click wrap, which means you could use it with your students, right, at UNCG? I'm not sure I understand. I mean, like, yeah, it's, I mean, because of the way that it's built, you aren't necessarily, I mean, it's not necessarily if you're having if you're not concerned with students using things like um youtube <laughs> i would not be concerned with students using something like this it's 
not necessarily open source in that the code itself isn't being widely distributed so that people can make their own personal tweaks to it. Um, it is free um, and it is, um, you know, freely available for anyone to use on their website. Um, again, the, the data itself is hidden in Google. You know, that's another good example. We're relying on Google to support that data indefinitely as well. So um, maybe the tools are open source. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not a coder, so I've never actually worried about um, whether I can edit the source code. Um, I've not seen anyone doing that, but it's very possible that they are. I just didn't think they were. Um, but from a user perspective, again, they're, they're free and, and open in that way and don't require students to sign up for like any kind of special account behind having a, um, a Google account. With scene. Um, there's a question about scene and do you have to use your own 360 images or can you use 360 images from Google? I'll be honest, I don't know. I have not used scene. Um, I know that for all of the other tools that I have used, you can use photos from just about anywhere. Um, that of course brings up ethical issues of where the photos come from and whether the photos are actually ones you should be using. But um, I would assume you could use 360 images from anywhere solely because that's the way the other tools work in the, in the suite of tools. Okay, so other people are coming up with questions. Um, I do want to quickly drop um, the link to where this will live again in the chat. Um, let me pull it up. So um, this is a series of webinars. So I'll talk about the next one coming up. Um, the next one coming up is October 6th. And it's on inclusive design and teaching with online learning. So you can sign up for that October 6th at 1 p.m. If you can't come, you can still use the sign up form um, and sign up for it and you will get a link to the recording. This is put on YouTube and closed caption as soon as we can. Um, we also have another webinar series on um, research and application that is typically hosted by uh, about research and application topics. So the next one coming up on that is October 27th at 1 p.m. and it is on is this a quality journal to publish in? How can you tell? Um, which um, we will talk about kind of um, not only how to tell where to publish but predatory journals. So there is a question on here. Um, and Aaron answered it. So is Night Lab a place where we just build an account and then build something in one of these platforms they support? And Aaron said, no account needed with uh, Night Lab. Uh, with Timeline JS, you just need the Google Drive account, a Google Drive account, which of course we have at UNCG. So are there any um, questions? So one caveat I will give just depending on who's using this and what you're using it for. Um, with Google, with Google Drive being the source driving everything, um, keep in mind, be it with a student or with yourself, that um, it's only going to drive from your Google account as long as your Google account exists. And with students, for instance, UNCG is usually not very slow when it comes to not like killing their accounts. Same with staff who leave and faculty who leave. Um, so if this is something that you're looking at outside of just a one semester student classroom type of thing, if you're using it for like a personal research project, you may want to tie it to a um, Google account that's not tied to you to an institution. So just a normal Gmail account, as opposed to um, your personal UNCG account, because if you Either that or when you're getting ready to leave UNCG, make sure you download it and you'll have to reconstitute the um, iframe or the URL. Hey, Aaron, Terry. this is Terry. Hey, Terry. Uh, <clears throat> a similar question, I guess, a follow-up to that. 
So when you, there's no account required, so you're not creating an account or holding um, or saving your projects on Night Lab. So basically everything's held in Google Drive and then you just tell Night Labs to use that data to create whatever you want. Is that how that works? So basically okay. the, yeah, all, all of, well, it depends on what tool you're using. For something like Juxtapose, you just have two images that are published online and you tell Night Lab where those two images are and it creates, it merges them together with the slider bar. Um, for something like Timeline JS, um, again, where you're working off of this Google Sheet, yeah, you as the, you have that Google Sheet in your Google Drive um, and you publish it to the web and you just give Timeline JS the URL for the published timeline. So you still have the data you just don't have the functionality to make it. I mean, it's kind of like if you think about how web pages work, you have, you know, you can, there's a difference between, you know, having the code and having it actually appear as a web page on yeah, your, rendered, your account. Yeah, rendered. So, okay. you know, it's, it's that functionality, it's that display functionality that the Night Lab tools present. Now, another question related to that, Do, does Night Lab update these tools? Um, yeah, that's to actually why I couldn't demo things? them today live. Oh, They're okay. updating Timeline J. They update it very quickly every time um, <clears throat> Google makes a change. So right now, Timeline JS is being updated because Google has made a change in how it publishes um, spreadsheets. And so every time when Google makes a change in how a spreadsheet is published, Timeline JS is updated so that no one loses any, you know, functionality or the, you know, the basic instructions that they show on their website are still very much up, up to date. Okay. And following along with that, um, if you need, I assume that Night Labs provides step-by-step -step instructions or help files or something like that. Oh, I see there's a community also, so you could ask questions related to the community. Yeah, and um, if you you know, they support, have very detailed both written instructions and video step-by-step in -step instructions. Um, honestly, it's super easy to use. I've okay. again, been using it in classrooms for years and you know, my graduate class is, a, is, a, is an LIS class. And so they're often students of many different backgrounds with technology um, and it's rare to have a student who can't um, figure out how the tool works using the resources available on the Night Lab site. Okay, thanks a lot. This was really great. Appreciate Thank it. You. And I'll just say like I use Night Lab, um, I use the Timeline JS with an undergrad kinesiology course where they made timelines about um, female coaches. Um, it went really well. It was easy and great and the students liked it. It was a 200 level class. Um, so they make it really clear on their website. It's great. Are there any final questions? Thank you, Erin. This was so good. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, everybody. Um, like I said, feel free to shoot me an email if you have questions or if you want to see examples of how we've used it both in the library, but also um, in some of my classroom settings. I can, I'm happy to share, honestly, like the instructions for the assignment if anybody's interested. Sorry, that's my husband's phone. <laughs> um, anything else? Okay, well, it is 1134, so I will let people go. Remember, you will receive a recording um, in the email plus an assessment. So if you have a minute, please fill out the quick assessment when you get the email with the recording. Um, and again, feel free to email Erin with any questions or me with any questions about this series. Okay, thanks, bye. Bye, Erin, thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna end it. <laughs>